What's going on everybody? I'm Johnny Brook. Welcome back to another Crafted Workshop video. In today's video, I'm going to be building this arts and crafts or mission style chair. And this, as you might notice, is based on this chair. So a family friend had two of these, wanted four more to kind of complete their dining set. And this is kind of what I've come up with. This has definitely been one of the more challenging builds I've ever done. Not only having to try to match this exactly, but it's a really complex build if you can't tell. Uh, because of that, I'm splitting this into two parts. In part one, I'm going to do the legs, the front and back legs, these stretchers that connect the legs, and basically just get the base done and then in part two we're going to do the backrest these back rails or styles I guess and then these decorative styles here on the sides so stay tuned for that that'll be out a week from today I do have a SketchUp model available for this I don't really have full plans I took so many measurements off of this chair it would have been hard for me to do plans but I do have that model up for free on my website if you want to check that out there's a link in the video description below so without further ado let's go ahead and get started with the build my first step when figuring out this build was to create a 3D model of the chair in SketchUp. And creating a SketchUp model allows me to do a few things. First, I can figure out how all the parts and pieces come together and work out what joinery methods I'm going to use. Second, I can get the exact sizes of all the pieces and determine the thickness and quantity of rough lumber I need to purchase. And last, I can generate a cut list to use during the build. So to start the build, I began by creating the back legs. And these legs are really the cornerstone of this build, so it was extremely important that I get the size and shape exactly right. And so to do this, I first traced around the existing legs onto a piece of 3 quarter inch plywood to create a router template. After tracing, I rough cut the piece to size of the bandsaw, and I just made sure to stay as close as possible to my lines without going over them. After cutting the piece of the bandsaw, I started smoothing out the shape on the oscillating belt sander, but quickly realized that I could use my jointer for the front faces of the leg. After using the jointer, I continued shaping the back of the leg template with the oscillating belt sander, and then moved on to a card scraper and finally some hand sanding. Once the template was to its final shape, I started laying out the legs onto the rough lumber. So for this build, I used pretty much all quarter sawn white oak, and the legs were made from eight quarter stock. After laying out the legs on the rough board, I jointed one face of that board and then planed the other face parallel, and then started rough cutting the legs from the board on the bandsaw. And this oak was really heavy, I had to put a bunch of downward pressure on the board to keep it from lifting up and knocking the guides on my bandsaw out of alignment. Once I had the legs cut roughly to size, I attached the template to the legs using double-sided tape and then moved over to the router table. And I lost some footage of this process, but I basically just used a flush trim bit. This is the white side ultimate flush trim bit and just moved the bit up little by little until the leg was fully flushed up. You end up removing the template towards the end of the operation and the bearing actually rides on the part of the workpiece you've already flushed up at that point. Next, I started breaking down the rest of the stock to create the other pieces. All of the stretchers on these chairs have a final thickness of one inch, so I started with six quarter stock, which is about an inch and a half in the rough. First, I laid out my parts onto the rough boards, just using a Sharpie, and then started breaking them down on the miter saw and table saw. Once they were to rough size, I could square them up on the jointer and planer. And while I'm squaring up the stock, let's talk about one of the sponsors of this week's video, Powermatic, the gold standard. So I upgraded to the Powermatic PJ882 helical head jointer and 15HH helical head planer right before starting this project, and it was a total game changer for my woodworking. The surface finish off of these machines is absolutely amazing, and I know that they'll last me for many, many years to come. And you can learn more about these machines by checking out the link in the video description below. Once I had the stretchers milled to size, I did the same for the legs, which are an inch and a half square. And on these parts without angled ends, I could also go ahead and cut them to final length at the miter saw. With these parts at their final size, I could start laying out the joinery for the chair. I use dominoes for the majority of the joinery on these chairs, but you could certainly use dowel joinery or pocket holes and end up with a very similar piece. First, I marked the locations where the stretchers would meet the front legs and then marked the center point of this location and transferred this mark to all the front legs using a square. I also marked exactly where the mortises should be cut with a little squiggly line so that I wouldn't get confused when I was cutting my mortises. Next, I cut the domino mortises into each of the legs using the Domino XL, and having a solid workbench made this process a whole lot easier. 
With the mortises cut on the legs, I then needed to cut the corresponding mortises on the front stretchers. I marked the center point on the ends of the stretchers and then cut the mortises. With the mortises cut on the legs and stretchers, I could do a test fit and make sure everything lined up correctly, and luckily they did. Next, I needed to glue in the dominoes in the locations that I just cut, since there will be an intersecting domino coming in from the adjacent face on the legs to connect the side stretchers. Gluing the dominoes in at this point allows me to cut the other mortise right through these dominoes without having to worry about the dominoes running into each other. The next bit of joinery I needed to lay out was for the back stretchers that connect the back legs to each other. First, I brought the legs down to their final thickness of an inch and a quarter at the planer. Next, I clamped the back legs together and started laying out the location for the mortises. And I'm actually laying them out on the wrong side of the leg in this shot. I should be adding the lines to the front face of the legs since I want the front face to be my reference surface. Once the layout lines were in the correct spot, I cut the mortises. And once again, I needed to glue these dominoes in place at this point since the dominoes for the side stretchers again will intersect these dominoes. Next, I marked the center point on the back stretcher and cut corresponding mortises to match the mortises I just cut on the legs. And with the front and back legs connected, I could cut the joinery for the side stretchers which connect the front and back legs to each other. The front legs sit a few inches wider than the back legs, so the side stretchers have a five degree bevel cut in parallel on each end. I cut this angle at the miter saw and also cut the side stretchers to their final length at this point. To cut the mortises in the side stretchers, I needed to set the fence on the domino to match that five degree angle. And the easiest way to do this that I've found is to hold the actual workpiece up against the domino's fence and lock it down referencing off of that workpiece. That way, if the angle on the workpiece is off slightly, the domino's angle will still match. I marked the center point on the upper side stretchers and cut the dominoes on both ends. I then cut the corresponding mortises on the legs. I could also use the same layout lines as before, I just brought them around the edges of the leg using a square, and this ensured that all my stretchers were lined up horizontally. At this point I did a quick test fit to see exactly where the side stretchers met up with the front legs, and marked that exact location. And using those marks I cut the mortises into the front legs to accept the side stretchers. Next I worked on the lower side stretchers. So the ends toward the front of the chair are the same as the upper side stretchers with just a five degree bevel cut on one end, and I went ahead and cut all these ends and then marked the stretchers into pairs. The end towards the back of the chair is a little more complex since it's a compound miter. The bevel is the same five degrees as the front, but there's a roughly 11 degree miter as well so that the stretcher can intersect with the back leg correctly since the back leg splays out at the bottom. I marked this angle using the existing chair for reference and then matched the angle on the miter saw. Next, I transferred the location of the lower side stretcher to the leg using a square and then transferred this mark to the rest of the legs using a square as well. I then cut the mortises into these locations on each of the legs. Let's talk about Woodpeckers, another one of this week's sponsors. When creating mortise and tenon joinery like this, one of the big keys to success are accurate layout lines. Woodpeckers makes incredibly high quality layout tools like squares, rulers, and other items that will make your woodworking more accurate and precise. I use Woodpeckers tools on every project and their router table in particular was indispensable on this build. To learn more about their tools, visit woodpeckers.com or check out the link in the video description below. Next, I cut the mortises on the ends of all the side stretchers, making sure everything was centered and that the bevel angle on the domino matched the bevel angle on the end of the stretchers. And finally, I transferred the center lines from the stretcher to the back leg and then cut mortises in that location on each of the back legs. And as you can see, the miter on the lower stretcher matches perfectly with the angle of the back leg. And that's where I'm gonna leave you guys for part one. And here's what the chair looks like at this point.
All right, hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. As I said, this is probably the most challenging woodworking project I've done to date, but I am really happy with the way they've come along so far. So again, part two will be out a week from today. We'll get the backrest done, all of these backsplat styles, these decorative styles here on the side, and get the stain and finish applied. Uh, go ahead and get subscribed so you don't miss that. Also turn on that little notification bell so you don't miss any of my videos. Also, if you haven't noticed, I have new Crafted Workshop t-shirts available. Love the way these came out, super soft, super comfortable, and 20 bucks shipped anywhere in the US. I also do have international shipping available. So I'll have a link in the video description below if you wanna check those out. Also have links to all the tools and materials I used if you wanna check those out as well. And last, I wanna say a big shout out to all my Patreon supporters. I'll have a list of my $10 and up patrons here at the bottom of the screen. Thank you guys so, so much. I'll have a link for you guys to go check that out as well. All right, thanks again for watching guys. And until next week, happy building.